uh, please play, stay standing while Reverend Christensen, the pastor of the First Parish Federated Church of South Berwick, offers the invocation. Let us be together. For the memories of yesterday, its friendships, its teachers and mentors and guides, its mysteries which have opened to understanding, its first loves, joy and pain, its journeys and games and tests, and all that it's held which has helped us to become who we are for the memories of yesterday, O oh God, we offer you our praise and our thanks. And for the joys of tonight, our families assembled, our goals and dreams attained, the honors which are given, the honor which has been maintained, the pride which we feel, the congratulations which we give, for all which fills this evening with joyful tears and tearful joy, we offer you our praise and our thanks, O God. And for the promise of tomorrow, the mysteries it holds, the beauties it conceals, the trials which will stretch us, the pleasures which will comfort us, the eternal newness of it all, and for all which will help fill it, which will help us to grow. For the promise of tomorrow, we offer you our praise and our thanks. O oh God of yesterday and today and tomorrow, hear our praise, receive our prayer. Amen. Please be seated. For, for those of you at the back of the room, there are about eight or ten seats up here and about five in the middle of the room. You want to take a moment to move down. That's another way of saying this is a long show, so you better get a seat. We still have a few more seats. Members of the class of 1993, faculty, families, and friends, welcome to the 1993 baccalaureate. Tonight we come together to celebrate the achievements of lower, middle, and upper school students and to celebrate uh, in the baccalaureate service the special talents and memories of the class of 1993. Before doing that, I would like to take a moment to mark the departure of five members of the faculty. Uh, this is a new attack uh, for me. Uh, I have felt this lacking in the past couple of years and would like to do it now with your leave. I speak a great deal in different occasions about uh, the ability, the potential of us all to write history, to create history. And during the next 24 hours, we will talk much about uh, the class of 1993 and the history it has written. But a part of that history, a very important part of that history, sits at the front of this room. Uh, the faculty have been a part of it, will be a part of it. Uh, they are Berwick. The five who are departing uh, will leave a special history behind them. Mr. Bonobo brought us a glimpse of that multilingual, multinational world that awaits us all in the 21st century. And uh, I would add a personal note that he also uh, single-handedly ended the uh, parent-faculty basketball game. <laughs> Mrs. Lowell has been taken from us uh, by a marriage, uh, and we don't uh, resent that, uh, no matter how I sound, and taken away by another school. Uh, one of our senior faculty members summed it up very well uh, when he said that he has never seen a new teacher who was so good so fast. Mr. O'Brien returns to Luxembourg, and it will be a long time before we forget his high standards, his very gentle ways, and his amazing fiddle. Mrs. Claff will stay in South Berwick, and we are fortunate for that. But we will miss her talents, we'll miss her grand spirit, and we will miss her amazing, in faculty meetings especially, we will miss her amazing sense of humor. 
Mr. Nevius has written a much longer history at Berwick. Suffice it for this moment to note that the former headmaster asked Mr. Nevius to bring excellence to the English department, and he did. My thanks, my sincere thanks to all of the faculty, and especially to the departing five, for a glorious year. awards are the William Lambert Cogswell prize books, which are presented each year to our ranking scholars. Mr. Witherby, the head of the middle school, will present the Cogswell prizes for the middle school. The Cogswell awards are for those students who attain the highest academic average throughout the school year. Um, these are students who obviously work very, very hard and put a great deal into their school work, and this is an opportunity for us to recognize them for all that they do throughout the year. In the fifth grade, the award goes to William Schleyer. In the sixth grade, a student who began with us in the first grade and after leaving has returned in the sixth grade and we are delighted that she has, Nicole Sylvester. seventh grade, an extremely hard-working and capable student, Dipta Basu. In the eighth grade, a student who a week ago won the athletic award for the middle school. She shows her versatility, Elise DeVito. It gives me great pleasure to present the William Lambert Cogswell Prizes for the upper school. For the ninth grade, the recipient is Dominic Rio. For, for the tenth grade, Poppy Hagen. I don't know why Poppy got the bigger book. For the 11th grade, Justin Quimby. Many seniors participate in the Big Sister, Big Brother program. It is one of the great traditions of the academy. The uh, two first grade teachers, Wendy Harrington and Elizabeth Good, will come to the uh, stage to present the Big Brother Big Sister Awards. It is truly with great pleasure that we present the Big Brother and Big Sister Awards tonight to the senior class. Each senior who participated in the program this year was truly dedicated to a first grader um, in our class. For the first time and through their initiative, the seniors organized a once a week meeting with the first graders who eagerly awaited the arrival each Monday afternoon of their seniors. The time, act, attention, and thoughtfulness displayed by the seniors to our class was remarkable and promoted a very special bridge between upper and lower school. We appreciate the uh, efforts of all the participating seniors and wish to award each of them this year. We particularly wish to acknowledge the leadership displayed by two seniors who organized this year's Big Brother and Big Sister program. We are going to be assisted in presenting our awards by two of our first grade students who we'd like to invite to come down now, Nate Witherby and Allison Ridgway. Nate is presenting his Big Brother Award to a senior who gave so much of his time and energy over the course of the year to a true leader of the Big Brother Big Sister program, Bill Dogan. big 
sister, Jessica Chalfin. recognize students who are outstanding in areas of academic endeavor or citizenship. Mrs. Rio, the lower school director, will present the lower school awards. This year's winner of the Citizenship Award is a young lady who has charmed us all in her two years with us. She's charmed us with kindness and genuine care, but most of all with her diplomacy, Anna Jackson. The award for composition this year recognizes a fourth grader who has delighted and entertained us all with his remarkable writing skills and who has inspired his classmates to write better than they ever thought they could, Owen Daly. citizenship, contributions to the school and fellow students, and academic excellence in each of the middle school grades. Again, Mr. Witherby will present the middle school award. The middle school awards are special within each grade for the reasons that Mr. Ridgway just described them. Um, within each of the grades we have a number of outstanding students and this is our opportunity to recognize those, although it's always a very difficult decision, who have just had outstanding years. In the fifth grade, the award goes to a young lady who is always enthusiastic, a very, very hardworking uh, student, and every day of the school year, it seems, throughout the day, she always has a smile on her face, Emily Taylor. The sixth grade recipient is a new student to Berwick this year. In the short time that she's been here, she has established herself as a leader of her class, an outstanding student, uh, and Mrs. Rio spoke of diplomacy before. Uh, in the sixth grade is often a very tough year, and this recipient has gone a long way in making that year much easier for her classmates. Lena Capiello. The winner of the seventh grade middle school award is someone who uh, is very, very well-rounded. Uh, I had the privilege of teaching her an English class this year within the middle school. She's a high honor student, a very good athlete, uh, a main driving force of the middle school student government. She's
She's had a wonderful year. Caitlin West. We have another new student to Berwick as the recipient of the eighth grade middle school award. An outstanding athlete, a high honor student, and someone who, in the short amount of time that he's been at Berwick, has endeared himself, both the faculty and the fellow students, in an incredible way, Jason Perrin. The honor awards are presented annually to the students who are outstanding in specific fields of academic endeavor. Mr. Nevius, the head of the English department, will start with the English award. Other department heads and faculty members will follow according to the program. Mr. Nevius. I wish I could turn down these lights a little bit. The uh, English award was a much debated award this year. Uh, a lot of people had uh, <laughs> their uh, prime lights. And I'm very pleased to announce that uh, we arrived at the consensus. A student who impressed his false master teacher immeasurably and who turned in a, a great final paper for me, and that's Brad Adams. One of the only things that I really uh, miss about not being able to teach the AP Calculus here, uh, there's a fellow on the faculty that's a lot older than I am that teaches that. <coughs> but one of, the, one of the few things that I miss about that is not getting a chance to, to uh, work with our top senior math students. The recipient of this year's math award has been around BA for many years now and has excelled in everything uh, that he has done. He has consistently challenged himself in all academic areas and has supplemented his fine, his excellent work in mathematics with independent work in math related areas such as computer programming. It is a pleasure to present this award to Chad Leggett.
The Chemistry Award this year goes to Chad Legend. Well, this is also a very hard uh, decision always to make in history. And this year's uh, recipient of the History uh, Honor Prize, uh, I didn't have the privilege of teaching because uh, he shared my colleague's unnatural fondness for fallen empires, which is an unfortunate thing. But he was with Mr. Sullivan in Rome and Mrs. Clapp in the former Soviet Union. Uh, but he is a first-rate scholar. And I hope at some point he turns his attention to building empires, and I think we'll all be the better for it. So keep a lookout uh, for Justin Call in that capacity.
present the dance award to a senior who has shown a lot of commitment, dedication, and talent. She helped make Mary Poppins what it was this year. She danced four different roles. I'll miss her. Um, I hope she keeps dancing. She's a lovely girl, Melissa Mead. Perkins Prize was created in the memory of Thomas Allen Perkins and is awarded annually to the junior or senior who is a native and resident of the state of Maine, who has attended Berwick Academy for at least two years, and who has attained the highest rank in English and history. Mr. Nevius will again present the Perkins Prize. The uh, student who is going to get the Perkins Prize is uh, it's not going to be his only prize. And uh, I'd like to pause and say that, that this is a student who, uh, who goes beyond being a good student. He's a questioner. Uh, sometimes he can't see the forest for the trees. But he's always questioning. And he's always looking. And he's always asking. And I, I don't think you can ask much more out of a student if you're a teacher. Chad Legend. <laughs> Mrs. Kahlberg will present the Bosch and Loam Medal Award, which recognizes outstanding work in the sciences by a junior. Christensen just leaned across and he, watching this uh, uh, parade of talent and he said what a thrill it must be uh, to uh, be involved in an institution with students like these. Uh, it sure captures the moment. I thank him for it and wanted to share it with all of you. Uh, Mr. Nevius once more will return to the uh, stage to present the Timothy Kelleher Prize for Outstanding Work in English by a Junior. First off, uh, I've spent 10 years here. We, we've stopped reading the uh, Kelleher little citation that says we have a special exam for this. I won't admit right now, we do not. Nor have, since I've been here, have we ever. I'm sure somewhere in my desk drawer there's an exam that kids are supposed to take. But it just has never happened, and I'm just as happy, quite frankly. Uh, the student who's going to receive this award has been a leader in the junior class for the entire year. Uh, just last night he was a leader at the prom, uh, collecting money from anybody who hadn't paid. Uh, his, his reading, his analysis, and his writing is impeccable, and I fully expect it will be even better next year. Justin Quimby. The Blue and White Award is presented annually to the underclassmen who, in the eyes of the faculty, uh, have contributed most to the academy. I am pleased to present these awards to two juniors, to Michelle Du Bois, and to William Marple. Junior who has distinguished him or herself in mathematics and the sciences. Mr. Hawks will present the Rensselaer Award.
Uh, we ought to give this uh, young man a seat up near the front of the uh, auditorium. <coughs> I won't say very much except to say that uh, you've already heard that he is Berwick Academy's first AP physics student. He also has completed the advanced placement calculus course as a junior and will take a second advanced placement calculus course uh, next year. Justin Quimby. Justin, you did not heed me. The Xerox Award is presented to an outstanding junior in the humanities or social sciences who best reflects the ideals of leadership and community service. The 1993 Xerox Award recipient is Justin Quimby. Brown Book Award recognizes a junior outstanding for her or his work in English. The 1993 Brown Book is awarded to Heather Davis. recognizes a junior combining academic achievement, leadership, and concern for others. This year's Smith Book Award is awarded to Susan Roll. <laughs> is awarded to a junior who has demonstrated intellectual leadership and who has made a positive contribution to the extracurricular life of the academy. The 1993 Dartmouth book is awarded to Jed Meddy. College Rachel Carson Book Award is presented to a junior woman who has exhibited outstanding achievement in the study of science or English. This year's recipient is Marie Johnson. Wells College Leadership Award honors a junior class woman who has achieved a cumulative GPA of 86 uh, percent or better, who has demonstrated leadership in community or school activities. Mrs. Brandon, Director of College Placement, will present the Wells College Award. Uh, this award goes to someone who not only manages to maintain a very high GPA, which is a difficult thing to do, but who also seems to find the time to be concerned about others. Uh, it goes to a woman who initiated a new program at Berwick this year, which was tying up the junior students with the kindergartners at Berwick. I'm proud to present the award to Heather Davis. Science Teachers Award goes to that student who, through his or her initiative, has done the most to promote awareness of science or technology. The Society of Engin Women Engineers Award recognizes a junior woman who has excelled in science and mathematics. Mrs. Kahlberg will present both the New England Science Teachers and the so Society of Women Engineers Awards. Teachers is a group that was founded at MIT about four years ago. Um, it came out of a program that they sponsored, uh, initially had 50 members who were all teachers in New England of science, very interested in promoting science. And over the 
four years it has grown. Uh, the purpose of this award is not necessarily for the most talented science student, although some of these students are very talented, but it's rather the people who share their science, people who do something to bring it to others. This year there were two students at the academy and I could really not decide between them. So I talked to the powers that be and they said yes, it is possible to give two awards and that's what we have done. The students in question shared science with the lower school throughout the year. They were responsible for putting together programs and bringing them to the lower school, presenting them to the lower schoolers, and I heard nothing but praise for the material they presented and for the way they interacted with these children. And the lower school teacher said to me over and over how much they appreciated them coming down and how much the children appreciated them coming down. So I'm very happy to present the awards to Susan Roll and Eric Hiltunen. Thomas B. Davidson Marine Fellowship recognizes the student demonstrating the most interest and achievement in marine sciences. Mr. Melhorn will present the Thomas Davidson Fellowship Award. Uh, the re recipient for this year's uh, Thomas B. Davidson Marine Science uh, Fellowship Award is not here this evening, but it's my pleasure to recognize him just the same. Uh, he's probably already uh, heading out. I know he's intending uh, to go down uh, this summer to Belize to study dolphins. Uh, and this year's award goes to uh, Eric Hilton. The Hilltop Awards honor the outstanding female and male three-season athletes. Mr. Raposa, the Director of Athletics, will present the Hilltop Awards. Uh, Hap, I'd like to just pause before presenting the Hilltop Awards. Last week we established uh, the Bulldog Award to recognize commitment from seniors to the athletic program over their four years at the Academy. And in doing so, I neglected to include one member of the senior class, and I'd like to recognize him. He certainly left his mark, both uh, with the cross-country program, on many basketball courts that he played on, on both the baseball and lacrosse fields, and I'd like to include in the Bulldog Club, Lucas Seventy. Hilltop Awards were special awards established last year, and the two recipients are also members of the Bulldog Club. The young lady that is to receive this award collected most awards possible, I think, in the spring season. She also was recently contacted by the local newspaper and hopefully has been informed by now that she will be one of six student athletes from the Seacoast region to be featured in the uh, newspaper next weekend. The young man to re win this award uh, was an, an, an amassed an incredible 10 varsity letters through his years here at Berwick and capped his season by co-captaining the baseball team to a second consecutive NEPSAC championship. Congratulations to the Hilltop Award winners, Matt Genest and Sarah Dolan.
Class of 1915 award recognizes an academically outstanding student selected by the headmaster, the head of the English department, and the head of the mathematics department. It is my pleasure to award the Class of 1915 award for 1993 to Alec Silverblatt. The Douglas Dara Hollis Memorial Award honors that senior who has demonstrated outstanding achievement in the dramatic arts during her or his career at the Academy. Mrs. Blargion, Mr. Blargion will present the Douglas Dara Hollis Award. It is indeed a pleasure to honor a young lady this evening who is no stranger to our stage. She has appeared in countless productions throughout her years at Berwick. From a farmhand in Charlotte's Web, to a wife who sang before husbands clad in mere boxer shorts and little Abner, she has delighted our audiences. A highlight for me was her outstanding dance solo in Brigadoon. Please join me in honoring Hava Kahlberg. Carson Thompson Award is named for one of the founders of the Academy. It recognizes a senior who has contributed to the lives of others off the hilltop. The 1993 Parson Thompson Award goes to Jessica Chalpin. During the last nine months, we have had the rare good fortune uh, to share the hilltop with two young men from across the Atlantic. It is my pleasure to award them certificates of attendance from the Academy, Gorka Urbiti and Johan Holtquist. Master's Awards recognize members of the senior class who best typify the ideals and spirit of the Academy. It is my pleasure to present the Headmaster's Award to four seniors, Sarah Dolan, Jesse Fries, Hava Kahlberg, and Beth Shirley. It's now my pleasure to turn the program over to Mrs. Paisant, President of the Cum Laude uh, Chapter, and to Mr. Doggett, the Assistant Headmaster, for the formal installation of our new Cum Laude members. For me, and I hope for you, this is a very special time. It's a time when we say well done to all the students who have worked so hard and played so well, who have laughed together and at times cried together, who have forged friendships that will last down through the years, even though their paths may separate. It is a time when we recognize outstanding achievement in many areas, and I have the pleasurable duty of recognizing superior academic achievement through the induction of worthy students into the cum laude society. The pursuit of academic excellence is never easy and takes a special kind of dedication and a love of earn learning. The cum laude society was formed to recognize and honor academic accomplishment by high school students in much the same way that Phi Beta Kappa recognizes similar achievement in our nation's colleges. The standards of membership are high. Schools undergo a rigorous examination before being granted charters. At Berwick, we elect only juniors or seniors who have been at the school for two full years 
and who have selected a very challenging program. Seniors must have maintained an overall average of at least 85% in all their classes, and juniors may be chosen only if they have maintained an average of 90% or above. In any case, we never elect more than 20% of our senior class, nor more than 10% of our junior class. Last year, four members of this year's graduating class were elected. Uh, they are Bill Dogan, Hava Kahlberg, Chad Legend, and Alex Silverblatt. The model of the Cum Laude Society is excellence, justice, and honor. Excellence in academic and scholastic achievement, and also excellence in the moral sense. Justice in personal relationships, and honor in all things, including the concept of personal dignity. Um, Bill, Hava, Chad, and Alec are joined tonight by four additional members of the senior class. They are Brad Adams, Joanne Gates, Adam Roberts, and Joseph Verrock. In addition, three members of our junior class have earned the distinction of membership, Jed Meddy, Justin Quimby, and Sue Roll. Um, I would like to ask Terry Doggett now, Secretary of Cum Laude, to help with the induction of the new members. Um, I need my one new move. I need the members to stand up, please. Could I have the members stand up, please, and the new members come down? All of you. charge to you is Brad, Joanne, Adam, Joseph, Jed, Justin, and Sue. During your four years at Berwick Academy, you have established a distinguished record for yourselves, which has won for you membership in the Cum Laude Society. The Society is a fellowship of scholars whose purpose is to recognize excellence in academic work. In your future educational pursuits, it is our hope that you will accept the honor of membership in this society as a responsibility to make some contribution to man's ongoing search for greater understanding of himself and society. In testimony of your admission to the Cum Laude Society, by the authority of the society duly granted, we now present to you the certificate of membership and a pin of the society. moments from commencement celebrations in the past have invariably come from the graduates themselves. It is my great pleasure to now turn the stage and you over to the class of 1993 for its baccalaureate. It will take us a minute or two to rearrange the stage and then it will start. Um, hi. <laughs> Dum, 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 dum,
couldn't stand the sight of a man to eyes one nose and a five-fingered hand as he galumped down the street moving like a cyclone on his 67 feet he was heard to say as he flew away some familiar words often spoken today he said hey glory what do you think this two-eyed boob scared me out of my sink hey glory never again if i see a kid i'll just say boom Steve Kranz back here somewhere, 
and we were sort of brainstorming what I was going to talk about. And we were talking about school and graduation and what it means to me and its significance. And he said something was sort of interesting. Sort of interesting. Oh my god. <laughs> Have you heard anything I've been saying? <laughs> if not, you really didn't miss anything, so don't worry about it. <laughs> What he said, and it's sort of, it's an awkward saying, but it's, it's sort of funny. He said, in life there's three, there's three event, major events. Your graduation, your marriage, and your death. And I thought that was kind of a strange combination. But, uh, <laughs> but I, I think he had a good point. If you put them together that way and you think about it, uh, it sort of gives new meaning to them. You think of your graduation, and it's sort of a springboard. From here on, all of us, uh, graduation from high school or college or whatever we do, uh, we have to make decisions for our life uh, that are going to change. Uh, even minor decisions that we are insignificant now, they're going to have a major effect on what we turn out to be. And from starting now, we have to take responsibility for our own lives, and we have to decide what we want to do and what we want to make of our lives. Uh, marriage, after that, I guess, not specifically, but it's so synonymous with settling down. You, uh, <laughs> by that point, you sort of, you know, your time's up. You can't start, you can't waffle anymore. <laughs> you have to, uh, you have to, you have to take whatever you've decided or whatever you're left with whatever you decided, or whatever you're left with, and you have to go with it. And uh, I think that's an important event. I think it was right in saying that. And then, of course, there's death. And what that is is when you, you know, you're strutted and credited your hour upon the stage, and you have to turn around and look and see what's happened. And the neat thing about graduation is that it's a combination of all the three. Um, it's like death, I guess, in that your childhood is over. Uh, we're all young adults here still. I mean, we're not, you know, we're not, we're not you. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But uh, for a large part, our childhood is over. If there's every, anything that I ever wanted to do as a child, be it summer camp or something that I wanted and I can't, I haven't done it yet, then I blew it. It's over. Um, uh, summer camp is an example. I kind of wanted to do summer camp, but now I got to work. I'm, you know, I got to pay for college and start supporting myself, and I can't do it anymore. Um, but at the same time, everything that I did do, I can look on back with satisfaction. And so, graduation is like death in that you get to look back and. You get to surmise what you've done, and you get to look at it, and it's a turning point. Um, it's sort of like marriage in that you've, we already made decisions. I think all of us except Jessica Chalpin up here, we know what we're going to do next year. Uh, <laughs> well, we're all going to college. Uh, we all know where we're going to college, or if we're not going to college. And Jess, well, she's still working it out. We'll give her time. But, uh, be patient. Um, but the thing is that we've all made a decision, and whatever it is, uh, I don't know how many of us actually got into our first choice for college or really doing what we started out we wanted to do, but whatever it is, we have to go with it now. And uh, it's too late to turn around, and so in that way, it's sort of like marriage. Not really. <laughs> and, uh, and then again, uh, of course, graduation is important in and of itself um, because we are making decisions now, and this is, we got to move on. So what the whole point of that thing was is that right now at graduation, we can look at it one of two ways. We can look at it as the end of our past or the beginning of our future. And it sounds really poetic, and it kind of came out. That's nice. But, um, it, it, and so it's kind of confusing to be a student up here. And we can hear uh, Laura and Lori and Hava, and they can tell us, I guess, their song from lower school. But just their, <laughs> well, they remember from the past. Or we can sit up here, and we can think about where we're going, and where we're going to school, and what's going to happen. And uh, I think, uh, I don't know why I want to say that, but I want to say it, and I got it out. Um, I think I didn't. Want, I didn't mean to say this to be funny or to be sad. I think just something to think about for the students here and for the uh, the parents and the faculty and the underclassmen, because whether you're living graduation or remembering it or looking forward to it, it's something to take seriously and something to think about and uh, something to remember. Um, thank you.
evening to parents, relatives, faculty, students, and most of all to the graduating class of 1993. Uh, welcome to our baccalaureate celebration. Um, sorry about my voice. Uh, the prom was last night. If anyone can't hear me, just yell. Uh, okay, uh, to begin things, I would first like to point out a general fact that we share the class, the title of class of 1993 with every other high school and college senior class across the country. But, because I know most of you probably didn't realize it, I would like to mention that we share this title also with the one and only critically acclaimed senior class cast of the television show Beverly Hills 90210. <laughs> and I ask you, should we be proud of this? I, I don't know, something to think about. Uh, the title of my speech, excuse me, uh, Reflections, pretty much speaks for itself. Uh, in fact, the writing of this speech truly reflects my educational experiences at Berwick. Uh, procrastination, the one and only true cause of the disease senioritis. When asked to recite a presentation at baccalaureate, I figured that the only logical time to begin thinking about it would be Wednesday evening, after the senior run, cookout, and graduation rehearsal. I thought that uh, inspiration from these bonding events would uh, be so overwhelming as to drive me to write a truly enthralling speech. However, you can probably figure out that this did not happen. Uh, instead, I procrastinated until after the prom and was left sitting in my room reading our senior write-ups. Uh, this is truthfully why my speech is titled Reflections, because these senior write-ups, they culminate the past four years of our, whole, uh, of our high school experiences together in 22 pages of code words, initials, and blanks for letters of words which can't be published. Basically a bunch of meaningful gibberish, which helps us all remember the great times we spent with each other. Uh, as much as we all joke about it, the students in this, and the faculty of uh, this fine institution uh, share a bond that, as Mr. Ridgway pounds into our heads, uh, time and time again, we are a family. Uh, now that classes are out and we have no more schoolwork for the summer, I can look back at my past six years here at Berwick and honestly say that although I have never experienced so much frustration, such a sense of accomplishment, or such intensity in academics and athletics, that the positive feelings I have, the feelings of achievement and success, make me believe more and more that Berwick has provided me with the strongest, most solid base for my future goals and aspirations. Um, and although I know that we are all excited about finally leaving high school, I'm sure that I'll truly miss Berwick and the experience that I've had here. Uh, the fact that tomorrow we will all receive diplomas for the completion of four years of high school is evidence enough that the entire Berwick Academy class of 1993 is a success. In closing, I would like to thank Mr. Ridgway, my teachers, friends, and family for the continuous support and encouragement that pushed me this far to graduation. Good luck, class of 1993. Thank you.
week when I was wandering through fog, that's fog spelled both F-O-G-G and F-O-G. I was overcome by the realization that my days of being in the fog were drawing to an end. That's fog spelled only F-O-G-G and not F-O-G. Here I stand now and I still can't believe that four years at Berwick Academy have passed and that it is time for me, for us, the class of 93, to leave the academy and go our separate ways. As senior class president, I have been given the opportunity to share some of my thoughts with all of you as we anticipate tomorrow's commencement exercises. While I was pleased to be given this chance to address you, I was distressed to think that what I had to say, likely, would be unimaginative, not profound, and most likely repetitive of many other similar speeches given by other class presidents in years before me. After thinking about it for a while, though, it occurred to me that my distress was unwarranted because what I have chosen to say, although not deep or profound, bears being said at every graduation on behalf of every graduating class. What I have chosen to say is said never often enough to those who deserve to hear it. What I want to say simply and sincerely is thank you. Thank you first to all of our families for caring enough to find the means to send us to Berwick Academy for supporting our many activities and for guiding us these past years. Thank you to the faculty who have tried their best to imbue us with their knowledge and for their advice and their friendship they have brought us to this day. To ourselves, thanks for caring and supporting each other, whether it was in the classroom, on the athletic fields, during a play or musical performance, or participating in student government. Because of the many opportunities we have been given at Berwick, we have a solid foundation for success in whatever we may choose to do. We are more thoughtful and concerned and we understand our obligation to serve others. Without knowing what the future holds for each one of us, because of our time at Berwick, we can all look beyond the fog, however you choose to spell it, and imagine endless possibilities. I am certain that if 25 years from this night we were to gather in this same place, we would see among us accomplished poets and artists, a scientist, doctors, lawyers, actors, a motion picture director, and no doubt a student or two who had returned to teach at Berwick. We would reminisce and remark about each other's appearances and about Mr. Nevis's infamous English classes, Mr. Fletcher's history courses, and we would be pleased to see the thriving institution Berwick had become. And we would be unamazed that Mr. Hawks was still here, a lot older and even meaner, <laughs> and we, we would be thankful for it all.
graduation is a time when a senior has fulfilled his or her academic obligation, supposedly, and, re and is rewarded for those achievements. Although the rigors of the Berwick classroom has played a significant part in our personal development, the academic torture which we have all endured is not the only thing which has developed our discipline, determination, and confidence which will be so key in our future. Mr. Ridgway has politely asked me to become the dumb jock and speak about Berwick athletics. It is hard to discuss athletics at BA without a hint of bragging. Uh, as a member of 12 different teams during my Berwick career, nine out of the 12 had winning records. Um, two of which were actually undefeated, uh, soccer and baseball. Of the two sports I played on the um, varsity level, soccer and baseball, I have played on five teams which have gained NEPSAC bids, two of which have actually brought home the championship plaque. On every team I managed to play on, it was my teammates who established a particular mood for the team. I would like to thank some of these teammates who demonstrated a tremendous effort and enabled these teams to reach glory. I would first like to thank Matt Genest for always putting in his best effort. Um, Matt and I have always been, have been on seven different teams together, and uh, whether he realizes or not, I've always uh, pushed to play at his level. Um, he's a tremendous athlete. Uh, David Wood, great kid, best friend. So, uh, Justin, even though I didn't um, actually compete in any teams with him, there was always a sort of a struggle, you know, him on cross country and uh, uh, Dave and I trying to prove that we could actually run, you know, in the Red Shoe Barn race. We beat him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, another individual I'd like to thank is uh, Mr. Melhorn my uh, soccer coach. Uh, Mr. Melhorn was a great inspiration to me, not only his witty humor, he said some pretty funny things sometimes, uh, but also his undying uh, desire to lead his teams to uh, success. I think one of my greatest disappointments at Berwick, if, if I have any, has been being in the NEPSAC champions, championship three years and not being able to win in one. Um, Mr. Clapp also deserves a warm thank you there are not many JV coaches who take such a determining role to improve their players so they can be called up to varsity. Day in, day out, Mr. Clapp was drilling our ill-fated hockey team, uh, <coughs> searching for improvement. I would really like to apologize for not as the captain giving uh, more dedication to the team. I was lost in the college process. Essays, interviews, more essays. Thanks. Uh, I missed about every third practice, if you can believe it. Not very much dedication for a senior captain, but I would like to thank him for understanding, at least most of the time. Finally, I would like to thank Mr. and Libby and uh, Mr. Doggett, both of whom have devoted so much time to baseball during the past four years that they developed a tremendous ball program. Uh, both of them have taught me how to become a strong, disciplined individual and actually become a true teammate. During the last few years, there's been a lot of memorable moments, all of which will remain in my mind. Most likely I'll be recounting these uh, um, altogether, probably boring tales to my, to my children um, in a dozen years or so. I'd like to thank all of my teammates during the last couple of years for making my athletic career memorable, enjoyable, and successful. At Berwick, I feel that sports has contributed greatly to my life. From such a small school, it is, it is amazing that our sports, pro sports program is so uh, outstanding. I will also, I will also be um, reminded of the great things at Berwick. Thank you.
joining us tonight. I would especially like to thank the class of 1993 for a terrific baccalaureate. The, the uh, people who've helped this music program and our orchestra for tonight uh, deserve a special hand. If you would rise, Reverend Christensen will offer the benediction. Let us again be together in a word of prayer. As the service ends, let us go forth with pride in what we've learned and accomplished. Let us go forth with humility for what we have yet to learn. Let us go forward with gratitude for what we've all received. And let's go forth with a sense of hushed awe in the face of the opportunities and human needs which await our response. May the God who has been with us go with us. May the God who has guided us guide us still. Amen. If you would be seated during the recessional, then everyone can watch.